If the student casts her eye over our derivation of the law of large numbers in the case of the binomial in the setting of poles, she might feel that the analysis, the usage of a square, the Chebyshev artifice, had a somewhat accidental character, a serendipitous feel to it. Chebyshev discovered his inequality in 1854. And there are few results in the history of mathematics and science which have continued to be so profoundly useful. So this segment then will allow the student to get a feel for why the inequality is so ubiquitous. It is not specialized purely to the binomial or the Poisson, but is in fact a very general statement about chance occurrences. Let us consider Chebyshev in the context of a continuous setting. This underlying sample space is the real line. We have a continuum of possible points from our, our chance driven experiment. The outcome of the experiment, the sample point, is a random variable denoted uppercase x. It comes equipped with a density, a mass function per unit length, p of x. And let us assume that this mass density has an expectation mu and a variance sigma squared. What is the probability that for a given deviation tau, some positive number tau, that x deviates from its center, from mu, by tau or more? So we should pause and take stock, figure out what the underlying space is, the measure, and the events. Let's take these in stride. First, our outcomes, our sample points, take values in the real line. The probability measure is induced by a density function, p of x, which has to be non-negative, that's to satisfy the positivity axiom, and it has to be properly normalized to have unit area. So on your screen, you see an example of a generic density function. Now, we understand both the sample space and the probability measure in question. What is the event of interest for us? So as always, let's use uppercase A to denote the in event of interest. And we recall that an event in this setting is a subset of the sample space and therefore must be a subset of real values. What real values trigger the occurrence of this event? Well, all real values, little x, such that x differs from mu in absolute value by the deviation tau or more. So that simple inequality, the absolute value of x minus mu being bigger than tau, describes all values x which fall within the provenance of this particular event. Now, a figure is worth a thousand words, as they say, so let's very quickly try to hone in graphically as to what the set means. For the figure at hand, for the density at hand, we have a two-humped density, a Bactrian camel, if you will, and you can see that the center of mass should lie somewhere between the two humps, possibly shaded slightly towards the broader, bigger hump, and indeed it is. So here's where the center of mass mu for this particular property law is. And starting from mu, you move away by tau in either direction to mu plus tau and mu minus tau. This region from mu minus tau to mu plus tau is a region of closeness to mu allowed by our event. What are we interested in? The region to the right of mu plus tau and to the left of mu minus tau. And so exactly, the subset of points A is described exactly by those two regions, those two subsets. Now, this completely describes the event at hand, of course, but this is not quite a useful formulation. And corking an eye at our analysis of the binomial, we try to massage this into a slightly more convenient form. Take the inequality again absolute value of x minus mu exceeding tau. If we divide both sides by the positive tau, 
then we get an equivalent inequality which says that the ratio of the absolute value of x minus mu to tau should be bigger than 1. Right? And therefore, our event A is described as the collection of points x satisfying this new inequality. Now, recall that a number which is bigger than 1 has a square which is also bigger than 1. In fact, for every number bigger than 1, its square is bigger than 1. And if its square is bigger than 1, the number must be bigger than 1. So this is equal to saying that the square of that inequality is also true. In other words, A comprises all those points x for which the square of x minus mu divided by tau squared exceeds 1. This, you will recall, is the squaring artifice that Chebyshev introduced in 1854. We have now come to a right understanding of the sample space, the probability measure, and the event at hand. It has now come time to execute and evaluate a probability. So let's start with this. Recall, we are dealing with a real line sample space, and the event of interest deals with a deviation from a mean value. Right, the region x for which x minus mu squared over tau squared exceeds 1. We now have to compute a probability. And of course, a probability in the setting in the continuum is an area under a curve. It's going to be an integral. So we want to look at the area which is in that particular region. Right? Now let us execute. We are interested in the probability, reading it out in words, that x deviates from mu in absolute value by tau or more. This, of course, is given by an integral, right? a limiting sum. It's going to be the area under the curve indicated in the figure. And formally, algebraically, in calculus, we'll write this as an integral over the set A of the density function p of x dx. This is the area under the curve of p of x over the set A. Now, let's rewrite this ever so slightly differently. What we mean by this is the same as saying that in the region of interest, the points x contribute a weight of 1. Right? 1 times p of x is, of course, p of x. And outside the region of interest, points x contribute a weight of 0. Nothing. Well, of course, I've got, done no damage to the, the identity. Right? It is Multiplying p of x by 1 just gives me p of x. So what? But here's where the Chebyshev idea comes to the fore. Notice that in the region of integration, over all the x's that comprise a set A, in that region, the square of x minus mu divided by tau squared is bigger than 1. And therefore, if I replace the red 1, by x minus mu the whole squared divided by tau squared, I'll have increased the integrand and therefore increased the value of the integral. OK, now we are getting somewhere. Why is this useful? Because squares are mathematically very amenable to analysis. You'll see why in a moment, but a little more housekeeping first. We now have an integral of a square weighted according to a non-negative mass function. And this integral is over a region, a subset of the real line. But the integrand is a square and a non-negative mass density function. The integrand is non-negative everywhere on the real line. And so if I take the integral and expand its domain, from the set A to the entire real line, I'm only adding more positive values. I can only make the integral bigger. And suddenly now I've got an integral over the whole line of a square weighted according to a density function. We're home free. Let's observe that in the denominator, the deviation squared tau squared is a constant it does not depend upon x, the variable of integration, and can therefore come out of the integral. So if we pull it out, we've got now a reworked integral. Have we gone any further forward? Have we got Farada? Pause for a moment and look 
long and consideringly at that integral on the right. Does it look familiar? It should. It looks like an expected squared deviation from a center, does it not? Indeed it is. In fact, it is exactly the variance of the random variable x. And therefore, the probability that x deviates from mu by more than tau is bounded by an expression involving the variance or the expected squared spread divided by the deviation squared. Let's quickly summarize our discovery. This is Chebyshev's resplendent inequality. Few inequalities have had such an impact over such a period of time. Now, what this is telling us is the following. If the variance is small, then the probability of a deviation from mu is small. That is very intuitive. Remember, variance tells us something about the expected squared spread around the center. And you're saying, well, if the expected squared spread is small, then the variable tends to be concentrated near the center. It is unlikely to have a large peregrination moving away from the center. This is very intuitive, very reasonable. It also suggests to us that the proper unit of distance from the center should be in terms of the square root of the variance, the spread, the standard deviation, sigma. So here's a concrete question. What if we look at three standard deviations from the center? What if tau is three times sigma? Well, we just put in tau equal three times sigma into Chebyshev's inequality, and we observe that the probability that you deviate by three standard deviations or more from the center is no more than one in nine, approximately 10%. Of course, now this is a fairly precise statement, but to put it in context, uh, we should put in a slogan in place. And without further ado, here's a slogan. What we've discovered is that the probability that a chance variable on the continuum deviates from its expected value, whatever it is, by more than three standard deviations is small. It's no more than about 10%. In actuality, it tends to be much smaller than that because Chebyshev's inequality, for all its virtues, does not pretend to be particularly sharp. Right? If we tighten the result, we'll find that the bound is excessively generous in many cases. And therefore, in the vast majority of instances that a student will, will encounter chance, she will find that you have concentration around the expectation, the center of mass of the experiment, within three standard deviations with very high probability. Now, this is already telling us something about the intuitive base of probability. It now validates for us both these ideas of center, the expectation, as well as this idea of spread, sigma, the standard deviation. Both of these now have been put on a formal footing and connect gloriously with our intuitive idea of what center and spread should mean. But Chebyshev's inequality is to have much deeper ramifications. It leads to the law of large numbers. And we shall see this next.